you know, we've talked about this UK uh, rail strike that is uh, in the offing. I don't, I'm not familiar with this guy, Eddie uh, Dempsey. Apparently, he's the senior assistant general secretary of the Rail, Maritime and Transport uh, Workers Union, the RMT. It's on the show, the Jeremy Vine show, uh, but I don't know who uh, the woman is who's interviewing him. And uh, apparently they're, they're planning to strike day before a big, I think it's a sporting event. Um, and this is what we heard with the subway um, workers, too, when they struck in, uh, in Manhattan. I don't know how many years ago this was now. But whenever it's a key position, you hear, like, the pushback is they're greedy. They don't care about normal people, regular people. As if people who work on the subway or work for trains are not normal people. Like, who are the normal people? As if they're greedy. As if they have the, like, the, I, I don't know what a subway worker makes, but I would imagine it's less than the people making the decisions about what the subway worker makes. Indeed. Indeed. And um, if... People go on strike and they're not providing their labor is so crucial. Then maybe that's an indication of their value mm -hmm. and they should be paid commensurately. Right. I mean, we went through this with all the uh, what do we call the workers? Essential workers. They were essential, except when it came time to provide them with benefits or protection. Here is Eddie Dempsey. To tell you, it's a bit of a cheek having a program asking a trade unions being greedy for asking a pay, asking for a pay rise. The FTSE 350 top companies in this country, they profits have gone up 73 percent since 2019. When are we going to ask are they being greedy? What about the railway companies that have been ripping this country off for years? The point is, no one asks about their profits the or whether they're is, greedy. You're going on strike, and it's going to impact We're going on everyday strike. people going to work. It's at That's the start right. of the Commonwealth Games. That's going to no, no, it's not at the start at the of the summer, Commonwealth Games. At its height. It's not That's at the start of the Commonwealth Games. We didn't strike on the Commonwealth Games. It's the, the day before. The day before, before it starts. The day before exactly. is not as the it Commonwealth start, Games. As it's starting, you've got people travelling. It starts the day after. They'll be travelling on the day too. To Birmingham for the games, it's going to impact. People will find it hard on a strike day. But people will find it odd when it's not a strike day because there's people in this country spending 18% of their income travelling on trains. We've got the highest fares in Europe because profiteers have been robbing this country blind for years. At the same time, later on in this year, energy prices are going to be so high. Some of my people will be spending two full months of take-home pay on energy. And you're telling us that we're greedy for expecting workers to keep up with that. What we need in this country is a cost of living crisis addressed through the wage packet and we need price caps on energy and we need the profits taken down a peg or two because the people at the top of the economy they're having a disco and everyone else is being told that they've got to carry the can and tighten their belts it's not on i mean it's the same talk that we hear here too i mean uh, shared sacrifice everybody's got to tighten their belts we hear that at times of austerity and really it just means that Shared sacrifice really is just, it's not actually shared. I really do wish that some of our elected officials would react like he, like someone like Eddie Dempsey or Mick Lynch, his, uh, his superior at the, at the union due to certain specious media framing because like some, I mean, Bernie does it, but I feel like so few are willing to be like, you, you are literally using, you're using a reactionary framing. You're using it. You're not even a politician. You're supposed to be a so-called objective arbiter. And you're the one being like, are unions too greedy? Well, the difference is in this country, if a union official went on a TV show, if they were ever, 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 <laughs> ever, ever invited on, let's say, you know, a meet the press That's or right. whatever the Sunday shows that never, ever, ever, ever would happen. I'm, I'm sure it has in the history of, of television. But but if they were invited regularly on to television programs, they would not get away with speaking to the host in this manner because they would not be invited back. Like that's the way it works here. And it's not even, and let's be clear, like having worked in that uh, cable business, it's not ideological, at least then like, you know, I can tell you it's not ideological at MSNBC. It is really more about like treatment of the hosts. 
Well, host that you're not even on with. But, but this is ideological in the sense that this host is, I, I think that's the host of the show, but she's, she's talking to him about the Commonwealth Games, which, you know, is going to be in Birmingham or is in Birmingham. And that's what's going to be disrupted. The people going to this sporting event. I think this is it, Bradley, right? Um, it's like a, 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 a mini tournament or something. Um, and, and like... That is equivalent to the railway workers and their living, right? The convenience of people attending these games is uh, on the same playing field, but actually supersedes people fighting for their livelihood. The temporary inconvenience is enough to shun these workers. No, they're using their leverage. They have to use their leverage. They don't want to be, you know, disrupting rail or travel it's not like they're being malicious no this is the point that they had to get to in order to get their bosses to hear them the um the thing i like about uh the when union reps go on television in in britain is that there is at least some acknowledgement that like it's our job to get as much to get paid what we're worth that i mean that's like you know there there's they get pushback they get arguments with it but there's at least some like sort of understanding that that's their job for the union like in this country it's so mystified like yeah. what is the union doing like they're they're getting involved in this relationship that we have between management and people and like we want to share blankets just like they did during the holocaust and and uh and unions are just these interlopers at least in at least in in britain the attitude is like this is our job we're supposed to maximize value you're trying to maximize value for your shareholders we're trying to maximize a value for our shareholders like we're we all own a piece of the union that we are all part of the union that's it and we are just trying to maximize the value for our labor and when you tell us that us going on strike and withholding that labor causes a lot of difficulty for people. Well, that's us saying that that means that's our value to a uh, society. You know, in this country, it would be frank. Like you hear people, you know, like uh, the reason why top athletes get paid millions of dollars is because a lot of people want to come and see them play. Well, a lot of people want to come take the train. Less so in the U.S. So if we have this is more reason for uh, for infrastructure, more public transport, yep. so people understand the beauty of it in other parts of the country. Uh, but I think you know that's that's the thing I appreciate about that uh, that dynamic over there.